Hi everybody, this is Gijs again and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a tutorial, a tutorial on soft shells. In this video I will explain you the difference between a hard shell and a soft shell. And I will talk you through the different types of soft shells that there are on the market. Um, and I will tell you also something on how I test soft shells. Um, and what's also very important is of course how to maintain your soft shell. So if you want to learn something today, watch this video. Welcome to the tutorial on the soft shell. And before I start talking about this pile, um, I should explain you something about the background. In the Netherlands, uh, my former boss, Oppad.nl, um, is a website on outdoor and travel. And they asked me to do a review on eight basically similar soft shells. And I did this during the spring, summer and uh, early autumn and the reviews all eight of them have just been published on their website so if you're Dutch then visit opat.nl and see the review there but they allow me to make a translation of all the reviews and that made me think on okay how can I do a video on those products because most of them have been sent back already some are still here but some are well just basically stand-ins um, and then I thought okay let's do a tutorial on soft shells because it's a question that Quite a lot of people ask me by mail or uh, social media, what's the difference between a hard shell and a soft shell and what should I basically buy? So that's the background on the soft shell uh, tutorial. Now let's start talking about soft shells. What is a soft shell actually? The word soft shell is a little bit of a silly chosen name because it's got nothing to do with the material of the softness of the material. Although I must say that quite a lot of soft shells feel really soft to the skin. But before I start talking on soft shells, it's maybe easier to start with the hard shell. And I bought one. Um, this is a hard shell. And you can hear it a little bit. It also sounds like a true hard shell, if you know about hard shells. A hard shell is 100% waterproof. It's 100% windproof. And it is breathable. And breathable means that if you are sweating, the sweat can go out of the jacket. Um, how is this possible? Inside uh, the jacket or between all the fabric layers there is a membrane and a membrane think about this as a uh, sandwich bag which is very very thin and there are a lot of tiny holes in it because of those tiny holes the sweat water vapor can get out of the jacket but raindrops which are way bigger than uh, water vapor cannot enter the jacket and that's how you stay dry even when it is raining um, of course there has to be a certain temperature difference between the inside of the jacket and the outside of the jacket because if it's very warm outside well then there is no uh, transition basically so then you will get sweaty anyway but if it's very warm and rainy you should not be wearing a hard shell anyway now let's continue with these soft shells um, as you might imagine now is that a soft shell is not 100% waterproof and it is not 100% windproof basically because there are a lot of soft shells nowadays that are windproof for 100% as well. But most of them, they are windproof for about 70 to 90, 95%. And in a lot of soft shells, there is not a membrane. Or if there is a membrane, it's a membrane with way bigger holes. Now, what does this mean? No membrane, um, not windproof, or a membrane with bigger holes. That means that the jackets will breathe way better than the traditional hard shells. This means that a soft shell is basically the right choice if you are being really active and you need a lot of breathability and a little bit wind protection. Um, let's say for example alpinism, mountain biking and I always wear a soft shell when the weather is not that great and it's a little bit chilly um, but when I'm wearing a backpack because it's still it's got a lot of breathability it still blocks the wind a little bit and I don't get sweaty that much. Now let's continue with some different types of soft shells. Let's get this one out of the way under the table. And this is not about the brands basically, it's about the materials and how they are made. Um, let's start with this one on the right side for you guys. This is a quite thick soft shell. It's got a liner inside which isolates a, a lot of body warmth basically. Um, it is windproof but it's absolutely not rainproof. And this kind of soft shells I really like to um, put into my backpack for winter usage. 
when I'm done with, let's say for a long hike, I take this one, it's more like a puff in that relation. Now, if we go to the summer side, then you've got this really thin soft shell. And what I always like to do is just to see how breathable um, a soft shell is. Just take it, blow on it, and you feel, if you put your hands inside, how much air um, is going through and how difficult it is to do this with your breath. Um, this is a very good method. This is one that is about 70% windproof, so it's still, if it's windy, uh, it blocks the wind quite easily, but it is really a breathable fabric in the first place. Um, and because it's very thin, it's only for summer usage. Now, I already said also something about that there are soft shells that are totally 100% windproof and waterproof nowadays. And well, this is one of them, and as you can see on the inside, um, all the seams, they are taped. So this is a 100% waterproof soft shell. Now, why is this not a hard shell? To be honest, I do not know, because I call this basically like a hybrid hard shell, soft shell, soft hard shell. So what kind of name you would like to give to it. But this one, in relation to a lot of hard shells that I've tested in the past, this one feels really nice to the skin. So now I'm basically contradicting what I'm said what I said before, but this is in my opinion, well, a really nice hard soft shell. Now, one of the jackets that I've been using quite a lot is this, my logo is on there. Um, it's a medium thick, um, soft shell. It's good for a lot of general purpose stuff. Um, I use this one for backpacking, just for walking uh, through the nature reserve here in the morning. Um, it's not thin, it's not too thick, so I never get overheated, but it still blocks the wind quite decently. Um, so this is what I like a lot. Now, this is basically the types of soft shells that there are available in shops. And now I would like to tell you something about how I test, because one of the things what is very important with a soft shell is the DWR coating on the outside. DWR stands for Durable Water Repellency. Now let me take a little sip of my tea. Um, DWR, Durable Water Repellent. Um, what does it do? Well, basically, uh, what the word says, it repels water. And the best way of showing you this is by showing you this picture that I made earlier. As you can see on the fabric, which is basically the jacket on the left side of me, your right side, um, the droplets are really lying on top of the fabric. And that is, this is because of the durable water repellent coating. If I would shake the jacket, um, you would see that the droplets would drop off immediately. Now, the thing with the DWR coatings that we use um, is the fact that it is really a harmful uh, coating for nature. Um, the coating is based out of chains of fluorocarbons. And already for a long time, manufacturers are using a C8 um, variation of this fluorocarbon chain. And C8, it's a very durable chain. Um, it's hard to destruct. That means that those chains, those coatings last for a long time on a jacket and that's maybe a pro. But because of the pressure on nature, manufacturers are trying to work out different ways of getting a durable water repellent coating that are more environmentally friendly. Uh, one of them is a other version of the uh, fluorocarbon chain and that's called the C6 which is a little bit less harmful. But other manufacturers are producing already uh, DWR coatings that are totally environmentally friendly. So if you are looking for a new uh, soft shell or a hard shell jacket, be aware of this and make your choice, make a sensible choice. With jackets, I'm very curious always how good a DWR coating on the jacket is. Um, I always get from the manufacturers the data on the coatings themselves. Is it a C8, is it a C6, or is it something else that's more environmentally friendly? Um, to test it, I always test it on my spray machine. And this is something that I built at home, um, but it's according to official laboratory um, specs. What it does, I put some water on top of it. It's 250 milliliters. Then there is a spray nozzle, and this is a 45 degree angle. And the water sprays onto the fabric, and I do this for 30 seconds. That's exactly how long the time takes to get the uh, cup basically empty onto the fabric. I do this when the fabric is new. Then 
this result is most of the time not very interesting because most DWR cartridges perform perfectly when they are new. Now, then I put all the jackets and it's all in a separate washing cycle. I put them into a washing machine and I do it three times because a washing machine with some detergents, it is really, well, basically the worst test for a, a DWR coating. After those three washings, and I do this, of course, according to the wash label instruction, um, I repeat this test exactly the same. And then you see really big differences. Some fabrics, some GWR coatings are 100% intact, um, so that the water really is well repelled and you still get these nice drops on top of the fabric. And with other DWR coatings, well, you see quite a lot of damage on the fabric and you see that the water gets into the fabric itself. And this is something that we call a wet out. And with a blue jacket, and I'll show you this as well, um, it is very nice visible because the blue gets way darker. And you can see, really see these wet spots. So if you have got a jacket with a DWR coating that wears down after three washes, well, and you go outside again and it starts raining a little bit, well, basically then you are not very happy. And that's why I test, just to make a difference in showing you folks what a good jacket is with a durable water repellent coating that lasts and one that doesn't. If you want to know how all the jackets perform in my review, then please visit my website. It's all there uh, because I'm not going to name it here. It would not be fair to the, manuf to, to the jackets and the manufacturers that I already had to return because I can't show them. So please visit my website. I'll put a link below in the description. I told you that I wash um, the soft shell three times in my test cycle, but I didn't tell you why I wash them. And that's not only to get rid of the DWR coating for my testing, but also in, during my normal outdoor life, stuff gets dirty. And it doesn't only get dirty from sitting in mud or from rubbing into trees, but it also gets dirty because I'm sweating. Um, and sweat, salt, but also a little bit of fat that comes with the sweat gets into the fabric of, well, basically, every garment that you wear and it needs to be washed out at a certain amount of time not only because it starts smelling but especially in a soft shell and a hard shell with a membrane and these salty things the fat they tend to block the little holes that are so important to keep the fabric breathable so if you wear a soft shell or a hard shell for a longer time that is equipped with a membrane after a while it will stop working and then washing is really really necessary um, now, how should you take care of your soft shell? Well, basically the same what I did with washing. Uh, most of the soft shells can be washed at 30 or 40 degrees, but always look into the wash label inside the jacket. Sometimes it's not visible anymore, and then people go and search in the internet for the washing label, and then you find it and you do it, and something goes horribly wrong. Why is this? Well, because soft shells jackets, garments, they evolve. And if you look at the latest version, which is most of the time online or the website of the manufacturer, then the washing label or the washing instruction can be a little bit different. So in case you can't find your wash label or you don't read it anymore, it's not visible anymore, please, please, please contact the manufacturer and let them tell you what you should do. After washing, um, most of the time, it's quite sensible just to let the um, soft shells dry by the air itself. It's a sustainable method. Now there's one thing that you really should be aware of. I've been talking about the DWR coating already, but the DWR coating after washing can also be reactivated. It doesn't work with all the jackets, um, but with the majority of them, it works in this way. And this reactivation is done by heat. Some jackets, you can throw them into your uh, tumble dryer at a certain uh, heat on other ones you have to iron and again take your wash label as a reference that's the instruction how you should take care of this sometimes i use a torch blower i have a digital one which is uh, from i think 30 degrees to 180 degrees and that's how i reactivate my soft shells and also uh, my hard shells after washing one thing that you really should know is that if you wash it, use a normal detergent and don't use a detergent with a softener in it because soft shells, DWR coatings, um, 
softeners are not good for those jackets. So just use a normal detergent. Some manufacturers always also tell you that you have to use a special uh, washing detergent. For example, Faudé, they advise that you should wash with a Nick wax tech wash. But other manufacturers might, for example, advise Granger's performance wash. If you wash your jacket so many times that reactivating of the DWR coating is not possible anymore, then you have to apply a new DWR coating. And there are basically two ways to do this. Uh, the first one is use a sort of a washing uh, detergent um, like uh, Nikwax TX Direct. You put this into your washing machine together with your soft shell or hard shell. Um, you continue with the wash or you do the wash cycle and afterwards your jacket is basically impregnated uh, with this new DWR coating. The negative side of a wash-in is that the coating is not only applied to the outside of the fabric but also to the inside and that means that it also repels water on the inside so sweat will be repelled as well and well <laughs> it's something that I don't like. Um, the second option in my opinion is better. Um, and that is a spray on and a spray on is literally what it says just put your jacket over a um, coat hanger is that how you call it um, and spray the DWR coating on the jacket it's a very simple meta method don't do this outside uh, because a lot of the spray then will just go into the wind and into nature just do it in a shed or in your house uh, what I always like to do is just use a big cardboard box, put the jacket inside it and spray it in the box itself because then you don't get any pollution of the coating to the outer uh, world, which I think is very, very important. So that's basically how you restore or renew your DWR coating. That was a lot of information on soft shells and partly also on hard shells. And I hope this information is useful to you. And if it is, please give this video a like and leave a comment below. Um, if you've got any questions, complaints or remarks, additions, please also comment below or send me a mail at gijs at .com. If you want to know more about the soft shells that I reviewed earlier, please visit my website. For those who just tuned into my channel for the first time, you might not know that I am a 100% independent reviewer. I'm not being paid by manufacturers to make my reviews. I don't have any affiliate deals and I don't have advertisements on my website. And after testing, I always send the products back to where they came from. If you want to support my way of independent reviewing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram and like my Facebook page. Many, 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 many thanks in advance. Enjoy the outdoors. Ciao, ciao. And can you see this? It's cold. I'm going to get a warm cup of tea now. Ah, it's a wrap.